Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at a USB tester from Mooka. Now you may have seen a similar one on eBay going for around $5 or even cheaper. This is not that one, this one's a little bit more expensive. The reason why this one's a little bit more expensive is because it supports higher voltages all the way up to 20 volts. Now you might be wondering, why would you need higher voltage support when USB is only 5 volts? Well, if you're using Qualcomm Quick Charge, that can actually go anywhere from 2 volts to 20 volts. So that's why I got this USB tester because I wanted one that supports the higher voltages. Now to demonstrate this point I'm using a Qualcomm charger and a power bank that supports Qualcomm. If we look at this other USB meter you can see it's only reading 6 volts 0.8 amp. Now that's incorrect. This is actually charging at a much higher voltage but this watt meter is only designed for regular charges of 5 volts so that's why it only shows 6 volts on the display. If I use this new one you'll get the true reading so let's plug this in. And there you go, you can see it's reading 12 volts, 1.3 amp. To further prove the point, I'll put this one between, and then we'll be able to see both testers at the same time. Now if you look at this one, it says 12 volts, 1.4 amp. But if you look at this one, it says 6 volts, 1.2 amp. So that's the reason for buying this new one. I wanted one that actually supports those high voltages used by quick charge, and that's why it's a little bit more expensive. So let's talk about what you'd actually use a USB tester for. I've got two USB cables here. They both have the same connections on the end, and they look pretty similar, but they're not the same in terms of quality. One of them will allow us to charge our power bank much faster than the other. So let's start with this one. We'll plug it into our tester, and our tester is plugged into our USB charger and we'll plug the other end into our power bank and see how much power gets transferred. So you can see it's at 4.88 volts, 1.64 amp. Now we'll swap cables and try the other one. And with this cable you'll see we're getting around 4.8 volts, 2.2 amp. That's a much higher current, so we're going to charge our power bank much quicker. So right away we know that this cable is better than this cable, and we might want to get rid of this one and just keep this one. Now another example we use would be testing the maximum input of a device that doesn't have publicly known specifications. Now most cell phones will publicly say maximum of 1 amp or 2 amp, but some devices don't tell you. So we can just plug that into our tester and find out immediately. So this is a FLIR 1 thermal camera. You can see it's 5 volts roughly and around half an amp. So we know that the FLIR 1 charges at around half an amp. Now if you have a charger and a cell phone that are both compatible with Qualcomm, you might want to use your USB tester to see if it really is charging with Qualcomm or if it's just stuck at the normal 5 volts. So this USB tester can let you do that. Let's plug this in. Now on this power bank it actually has a red light indicating that Qualcomm was successfully negotiated and you can see here we're charging at around 9 volts 2 amp which is a higher voltage than normal USB. Now like I said this one has a light to tell you that it has successfully negotiated Qualcomm but this one here for example doesn't have any extra light so the only way you'd know that it's actually charging using Qualcomm is by using your USB tester. So you can see it's at 5 volts then it jumps up to 12 volts after they've negotiated with each other. So USB tester is very useful for that. Now the final use, and the one that I'll probably use most of the time, is measuring the capacity of a power bank. For instance, if it says it's 9000 milliamp hour, you want to test if that's true. So basically you plug your USB test into the power bank, then you use a dummy load like this, or a USB fan, anything that draws power. So if we plug our dummy load in here, this one's just a resistor, but it uses around 1 amp or 2 amp depending on the setting. So we can pretend that this is a mobile phone or a cell phone that is charging. Now if I turn my power power bank on, you can see that it's not only measuring the voltage and the current, which is 4.93 volts, 0.86 amp, but it's also measuring the power that's being drawn out. So if I leave this running until the power bank's completely dead, I can then come back and look at the power that we actually managed to pull out of the power bank. Now when you're doing your calculations, one thing you have to remember is that the rating on the power bank is rated at 3.7 volts, which is the internal battery voltage. But when you're drawing power out, you're drawing it at a much higher voltage. So there is some math involved to actually correlate the numbers afterwards. 
That's why I prefer my portable power watt meter because it actually measures watt hours, not just milliamp hours. So it's a much more accurate number to judge the capacity of a power bank. But if you're willing to do the math, this will do the job just fine. So you can see right now it's at 23 milliamp hour. And if we leave this for a while, that will continue to add up and give us an indication of how much power we've used. Now it doesn't have a battery inside. So when you remove it from the power bank or when the power bank runs out of power, this will turn off, but it does have memory. So right now you can see it's around 31 milliamp hour and you know, it's climbing a little bit. If I disconnect it from the power bank, it's now turned off. But if I plug it back in, you can see that it just continues from where it left off. So it does have a memory which makes it very useful. And then it's just got a reset button up here. You hold down the reset button and it will zero it out again. So that's the good things about this USB tester, but there are a few things I don't like about it. Firstly, the screen. It looks really good on camera, but to the human eye, it's very hard to read. It's too small, it's got bad angles, and it's just kind of annoying. Secondly, it doesn't show watts. It only shows voltage and current, and then you have to do the math to work out how many watts that is. And then finally, it shows milliamp hours, but it doesn't show watt hours. So again, it's something that you have to work out afterwards, and you can't accurately work out watt hours because there is some voltage fluctuation and current fluctuation when you're doing your testing. So it's an okay tester. It's definitely better than many other testers because it can handle the higher voltages used by Qualcomm Quick Charge, and it can measure current over a long period of time. But it's nowhere near as good as my USB watt meter from Portapal. This one can handle higher voltages, higher current, it measures watt hours as well as milliamp hours. It shows more information on the screen. Not only does it do USB, but you can also use external power sources of different voltages. It's just a much, much better watt meter and it has its own internal battery, so it doesn't draw any power from what it's connected to. So there's no way that this new one would replace this in terms of usefulness and you know being my favorite but as a secondary USB tester and a much cheaper one than this it does the job and when I have to test a power bank which might be running for say 10 hours or some of the larger ones for like 20 plus hours I'd much rather connect this and leave that running and then still be able to use this for other projects and other videos so overall it does get a thumbs up from me and if you enjoyed this video please do give a thumbs up and subscribe thanks for watching